you'll remember taking this test, whether it be the end of our junior year or the beginning of our senior year. In the beginning of our senior year, we also remember that guidance counselor that kept chasing us around to make sure that we sent our scores in to that certain school we were trying to get into. Good morning, my name is Stephen Hooks, and today I'm going to explain why the SAT should not be used in the college acceptance process. Now, I think this topic has great relevance as I am students because this is all something that we went through when we were seniors in high school and even back when we were juniors. The credibility I have for this is like many of you, I actually went through this process. So there's two claims that I want to make today that I believe are the reasons why the SAT should not be used in the college acceptance process. The first reason is due to the fact that many schools in our nation today are becoming test optional schools. I'll explain later on what that means. The second claim that I'm trying to make is that numbers should not judge a person and numbers should not be used to reflect what a person's personality should be. So let's begin by talking about claim one and what a test optional school means. The meaning of a test optional school is that the school reserves the right to tell you that whether depending on how you did on your, on your SATs, you could send your scores to the school, but they won't be looked at as the sole reason as to why you were accepted. So take, for example, a big name university such as Sacred Heart University or even Hofstra University. These are two examples of test optional schools. If I were to apply to them, I would not have to send my SAT scores to them because I reserve the right not to. I could send them if I did really well, but if I didn't do as well as I planned on doing, why would I want to send my scores? So many major named universities, such as Arizona State University, Hofstra University, Sacred Heart, and even local by Manhattanville, have become test optional schools and they choose not to have, to let you have the option of not sending your scores in. I think this is very good because if a person has a very good transcript, straight A student, honors, if some schools have it, a higher honor, then that should be used to judge the education level that you have. If a school is going to judge it based on the one SAT that you took, whether it be at the end of junior year or the beginning of senior year, and you scored just at the average and they want to put you in an average field, then it would be better that you don't send your scores to that school. If you do better on the exam, then you can send your scores, but that's a different scenario. The second claim that I'm going to be making today is how numbers should not judge who you are. When we are in the college acceptance process, there's a thing called the college essay. We can write about anything we want to do. One example is on NBC News that I saw recently that a girl applying for college actually got into five Ivy League schools and even got into Stanford University. How did she do it? Her college essay was all about how much she loved Costco. As crazy as that may sound, it caught the attention of the college admissions at the Ivy League schools at Stanford University. What wasn't revealed was that she did not even take the SAT. If she did, she presumed that she would get maybe a 1600 out of 2400, which relatively speaking for an Ivy League school is not really as high as what they're expecting. I feel as though that just because you score a certain number, that doesn't tell the type of person that you are. Some people are not really big test takers. According to Jeff Rains of Nick.com, Colleges actually look at your transcripts more than they look at your scores. So you see many people stress that, you know, they go to these extra prep SAT classes and they spend their money on them. I have to make sure I get a good grade. I'm trying to get into a good college. My parents want me to go here. If the SATs were eliminated, then we wouldn't have to worry about stressing to make sure we get that perfect grade in order for to satisfy our parents and to satisfy ourselves. Just because a person gets a 480 in math doesn't mean he's really good at math or she's really good at math. 
Or if a person scores low in reading, it doesn't mean that they can't read. They know how to do it. It's just they don't like to perform well under pressure. So the visual aid I have today is actually a stat from Wake Forest University. And it says 65 to 83%. That's an increase in the accepted students in the top 10%. Three years ago, Wake Forest actually became a school that eliminated the test scores. The reason so was because they felt that they were becoming Ivy League standards for a school that many people should be accepted to. So with the elimination of their test scores and not using numbers to judge a person, they allowed for more students to attend out of the top 10% of schools. Now, needless to say, we're referring to the top 10% and not the whole entire school, but it still shows that there's a great increase in the amount of students attending such a big name school where people like Tim Duncan attended. So, now that I've told you the two reasons as to why I believe they shouldn't be used, let me tell you a simple call to action that we can all use that can help change the world. So the call to action I have to you is that we can possibly take a survey for the incoming freshmen coming in that can actually show how the SAT affected them. What I mean by this is you have all the freshmen take a survey and let them write down the SAT scores that they received. Their combined math and reading and the total overall score they achieved. Now, with the results showing from this, and using results from, say, a different school, such as Manhattanville, if they're willing to participate, if people set their scores, you'll be able to see the difference of how, if you need the score, you perform higher, and if you don't need the score, you'll perform lower. Essentially, the people that, don't, that perform lower had less stress taking the test than people performing with higher stress. So, there is another side to this argument. There are some people that feel that the SAT is needed. The reason they believe that is because anyone can write anything for the college essay, and I understand that argument. Some people might write about how they do great charitable work, and once they get to school, they decide not to do anything. As weird as it may sound, colleges do actually notice that. So it's very important that people pick up on that. Also, you could see on your transcript that you know you had steady 80s in your sophomore year, but you picked up your performance. Colleges will commend you on picking up your performance, but at the same time, they'll want to see how well you performed on the SAT to show that you didn't do it because you were being bribed to do it or something along those lines. So, in conclusion, today we talked about how colleges all across the United States and all across the world are actually eliminating the SAT examination from the classrooms in order to see how well students can do with their essays and transcripts to get accepted into schools. And we also saw how numbers can't really prove who you are. You know, no matter what a number says about you, you can always change the world by one simple action of what you do. So, my name is Stephen Hooks, and I just explained to you why the SAT should not be used in the college acceptance process. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching.